We turn our attention now to our New Testament text, which is out of uh, the book of James, James's letter to the early church. And uh, we're in chapter 1, looking at verses 19 through 25. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they look like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. The word of the Lord. Dad. Dad. Dad, Dr. Judson, what, what, Katie? That's one of our great family stories. I I don't know how old Katie was when that happened, probably late elementary school or early middle school. 
and she was trying to get my attention and obviously I was not listening. And, and I think of that, um, of her trying to get my attention. It, it was even before cell phones and tablets, I was probably mesmerized by some shiny bauble or a TV show. Oh, the newspaper. What? Newspaper? What is that? I, I don't know. Anyway. And, and it just makes me think about how hard it is to really listen. I mean, think about all the distractions we have. Tablets, phones, text messages, to-do lists, grocery lists. What, what am I going to kill and eat for dinner? What, you know, what, what, what do I have to do this afternoon? What do I have to do around the house? Oh, wait, oh, wait, somebody else texting me, someone else calling me, right? It's it, it just, maybe it's harder to listen today than ever before. Any of you find it kind of hard to really focus in and... So it's hard, and yet it's not nearly as hard as listening like God listens. Now you may be wondering, okay, John, what do you, what do you mean, listen like God listens? I mean, doesn't God just listen? Well, in some ways, yes, and yet God listens in a unique way. And to to see that, what we have to do quickly is jump back to that Exodus text that David read this morning. Because in this text, we discover how God listens. And so the first thing about God listening is God listens to the cries of those who are in distress even when they are not crying out to God. Listen again. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Notice the writer doesn't say they cried out to God. They're just crying out. They had forgotten about God. They weren't sure who this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was. They were simply crying out, hoping to be heard. And then out of the slavery, their cry for help rose to God. God listens to those who are hurting who are in pain, even when they don't know to cry out to God. The second thing about God listening is that when God listens, God remembers God's commitments. God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It's an amazing thing, isn't it, thinking about God maybe forgetting, God having to remember. But the idea of remembering is that it brings to God's mind these commitments that God has made to the people to bless them and to make them a blessing to the world. That's the covenant promise. And so hearing, listening, God listens to the cries and God remembers God's promises, God's commitments. And then finally, God hears, God remembers, and God acts. God doesn't just listen and say, oh, well, sorry, sorry, folks. God acts, and that's the whole rest of the book of Exodus. It's all about God acting, about God freeing, about God fulfilling God's commitments. Now, again, you may say, John, this is all well and good, this is interesting. But what does it have to do with me? The answer is, if we listen to James, we are supposed to listen like God listens. We are supposed to listen like God listens. So we jump back to James, or jump forward to James. He begins, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen. In other words, one of our primary duties and responsibilities is to listen. Now, a lot of people have tried to explain, well, exactly what this listening means. Um, pastors have said it means listen to the pastor. Um, biblical scholars have said, well, it means listening to Scripture. 
Um, people who are in, in sort of into contemplative prayer say, well, it's really just listening directly to God. That's what it's all about. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a fourth, and I, I'm going to argue that what James means by listening here is listening like God listens. And, and there, there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that James is a good Jew. I think sometimes we forget that Jesus' disciples were good Jews. They were steeped in Jewish tradition, in Jewish scripture, in, in the way their tradition understood God and viewed God. Now, he was a Messianic Jew. He was a follower of Jesus. And yet I would argue that, that the Hebrew scriptures informed how he used language. And so part of what I want to say is I believe that when he says, be quick to listen, meaning make listening the first thing you do. Okay, slow to anger, slow to speak. The first thing you do is you listen like God listens. You listen for the cries of those who are in distress because this is part of what's at the heart of Judaism. So that's the first reason I want to argue that. The second reason is where listening leads us for James. So here we go. You must understand, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Doesn't produce God's righteousness. Now let me say, God's righteousness is, co is not code language for personal perfection. Okay, sometimes we think about being righteous means we're religiously and perfect. That's not what God's righteousness is. God's righteousness is God's keeping God's commitments to God's people. That throughout the Old Testament, when, God, when, we, when they speak about God's righteousness, it is about God keeping God's commitments. And so part of what we are supposed to do, where, where our listening is supposed to take us, is to be those who understand our commitments. We are to remember our commitments, which is to be God's righteousness. And the reason speaking and anger don't lead us to that same place of fulfilling our commitments as God followers, as Jesus followers, is because they shut off our listening. Any of you ever know someone who speaks more than they listen? Any, any of you ever know someone like that? Right, because the more we're speaking, the less we're listening. If we're talking about what we believe and what we want to do and what, 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 we're not listening. We're not being reminded of our commitments. And the more angry we become, anger literally, it shuts down our listening. Have you ever noticed that? The more angry you become, the less capable you become of listening. And so, so when we, we spend all of our time speaking and all of our time being angry, we forget, we don't see these commitments we've made to be God's righteousness. Which is why listening like God listens, listening to the cries of those in distress, the cries of those in need, leads us, leads us to remember that commitment to be God's righteousness. To be those who help God fulfill God's promises to the world. And the final reason I believe that this is listening like God listens, that that's what James is talking about, is where it finally leads him. He says this, but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they're like those who look at themselves in a mirror, they look at themselves, and on going away immediately forget what they look like. There are many mornings I want to forget what I look like in the mirror, so this is not a bad thing. But another way to think about this, what, what James is saying here, how many of you have ever looked up something on the internet to learn how to do it, to do something by looking it up on the internet? Okay. How many of you then have 
done it immediately after looking it up. Right? And usually it seems, it, it seems relatively simple. You have someone there explaining it to you, whatever it is. I look up stuff on Premiere Pro and Photoshop and all sorts of other things. Now, how many of you several weeks later come back to do it again and you think, oh, I know how to do that? And you really forgot how to do it. Right? Okay, so this is, this is what he's talking about is that if we don't do something, we don't act on our commitments because we've heard the cry of those in distress. If we don't act on it, then we forget. We begin to forget what our commitments are. We begin to forget what we've heard. And so what, what James is asking us to do is set up a positive feedback loop, okay? And, and, and the positive feedback loop go, goes like this. You listen to the cries of those in distress, the cries of those in pain, the cries of those in need. Then you remember your commitments to be the righteousness of God, to be the hands, feet, love of God. And then you actually do it. And where that leads you, when you do something, that leads you back into being able to hear the cries even more fully, which then leads you back into a deeper and more profound sense of what your commitments are. And then it leads you back to doing, and you do even more. And this, this positive feedback loop begins to recreate our character. It begins to recreate who we are as followers of God in Jesus Christ. Listening like God if you want to see what that looks like, um, one way is to look at um, Matthew 25 here in our church. It, it's, it's beginning with listening to the cries of people in color who are in distress, who are in pain. And then that leads us to understanding what our commitments are, remembering our commitments to be people of love and justice, to love all of our neighbors, to bring about justice in the world. And then that is leading us now through our lean-in events to action, to figuring out, well, what, what should we do? What can we do? How can we do that? And the hope is that this becomes a, a positive feedback cycle that once we begin doing something, it, it will help us hear better and it will deepen our commitments and lead us. But my friends, in, in, in our world today, there are lots of people crying out in pain and in distress. People who struggle with depression and mental illness people who are being uh, evicted from their apartments and homes and are becoming homeless. Members of the LGBTQIA community, especially trans people, um, are, are crying out in, in pain. There, there are just folks all around us. And so the question is, Will we listen? Will we listen to their cries? And when we do, will we remember our commitments to be the righteousness of God? And then will we be doers rather than hearers? That's, that's really the question. And so that's my challenge for all of us, and I, and I mean us on this day is to ask ourselves how am I listening like God? Am I listening like God? Am I willing <laughs> to listen like God? To hear the cries to remember my commitment to being the righteousness of God and then to do something about it. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you hear our cries.
that you heard the cries of people in slavery, that you heard the cries of people who are lost and alone, that you hear the cries of all of those who lift their voices to the heavens. Help us to listen as well, that we might be those who reflect your love, your commitments into this, your world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.